half here. Ten more horses to go. Um, first half went pretty well. I, I'm interested to see what's going to happen. Now we go to what used to be the rest of the gate, the auxiliary gate. Now we have that big 20 field, 20 horse gate there. So uh, hopefully everybody breaks a little bit better, and some of these outside horses, outside horses, have a better chance than they did in years past. So I'll start us off here with the number 11 horse, um, Pioneer of Medina. Um, the lesser of the Pletchers, in my opinion, Joe Bravo takes the mount for his fourth derby. He hasn't really done much in a derby. Um, the horse wants to go and the horse wants to go early. 11 post should not hurt it. Uh, it's one of the better angles going into the first term. Time for him, U.S. Figs from the last race of Fairground came back good, but not. But the, the margin of loss to Zozos, who's a very lightly raced horse in Epicenter, I can't really see this horse taking that much of a step forward. It's 30 to 1 on the morning line. I think they're very generous. This is going to be a 50 to 60 to 1 horse. Uh, this is going to be a toss for me. Tell us a little bit about the 12 horse here. Yeah, number 12, Taba, is probably the most polarizing horse in the field. I know people that think this horse is an ice-cold single, can't lose. And I know people that think he's going to run up the track and get beat 20 lengths. And honestly, it's one of the hardest horses for me to get a handle on myself. And I, and I can kind of see both perspectives. If you just look at his body of work, you know, he's done just absolutely nothing wrong. I mean, he destroyed a field of maidens with a huge speed figure he stretched out from six furlongs to a mile and an eighth and just his second start going from a maiden to a grade one. And he beat Messier, who was one of the leading candidates for favoritism in the Kentucky Derby up until that race. I mean, you could argue that he kind of did trip out a little bit in both of those starts. You know, in his maiden score, he did have a, a bit of a speed favoring strip. And then in that Santa Anita Derby, he did get a really nice stocking trip right off the dueling pair of Messier and Forbidden Kingdom. But you can't ignore the numbers that this horse has posted up, and they've been enormous. I mean, he's got the best buyers in the field, the best time form in the field, the best thoroughbred in the field. Pretty much any set of figures I've looked at, this horse is on top. So, you know, on the one hand, I mean, he seems like an extremely strong win candidate. You know, on the other hand, he didn't race as a two-year-old. He's making his third start in the Kentucky Derby. That hasn't had a horse win the Kentucky Derby in their third start since Leonidas way back in 1886 or whenever it was. It's been a long time. I mean, I, and I understand the times have changed. Horses are trained differently than they used to be. So he's a very tough horse for me to get a figure on. And I think I got to let Price be my guide here. If I can get, you know, eight or 10 to one on Taba, who is on paper the fastest horse in this field, I think he probably makes some of my tickets. But if he gets bet down into that five or six to one range and goes off as the second or third choice, I'd probably be a little more likely to take a stand against him and try to uh, find some value elsewhere. But definitely a horse that uh, is going to create a lot of division among horse players, I'm sure. That takes us to uh, a horse that I know is near and dear to your heart, the 13, Simplification. So lucky number 13. Before, I'll just touch on uh, Mike Smith is going into his 28th derby, which is a wild number to me, and he's won twice. So talk about experience on a horse with not much experience. You're definitely going to pick some up there with the jockey, especially in the field of 20. Um, going to 13, what do I say? Oh, baby, this I've been waiting for this one. Um, I have futures bets on this horse. I've been, I've been on this horse since, uh, one of our first videos we did, uh, in January of this year. Um, Jose Ortiz, seven runs for the roses. He's come very close before with good magic. Simplification has been sex successful from the front and from stalking in the Florida Derby. He dueled for the lead and got there, but then was caught nearing the wire. Um, Sano in a pre-race comment, and I, I think you can listen to it on uh, the Ron Flatter podcast. He said, uh, if I told Jose, if he's not clear, by the eighth pole, don't really push him. Save the horse for the next race. We already got the points. So interesting there. Glad that Florida Derby came back. Those comments was made before the race, so I'd sound about that a little interesting. His best race was the Fountain of Use. He sat in a stalking position, rallied when they had that little bit of accident and for the win. His tactical speed comes from the 13th post. He has that straight line to protect him. Uh, he'll go straight to that corner there. He doesn't really have to worry about saving any ground. Um, Fear here is getting caught maybe a little too wide in that stalking group. Um, he's been a monster in the morning. He's above that 95 buyer line that we spoke about earlier. Um, his t time form figures from the Florida Derby, bring him back, put him smack in the action of the field at 20 to one. He's going to be in my tries, my supers. I'll have a win bet on him. I have really good futures bet on him. at some pretty big odds. So this is a horse I'm going to be playing a lot with. I don't know if it's the heart here and the passion from being on this horse in the beginning or it's the numbers, but it's definitely a horse I'm interested in. Um, and I'm going to be playing a lot through. That brings us to the 14 horse, Barbara Road with uh, red hot Ray Lou Gutierrez, who's had quite a little start to this Churchill Downs meet. 
Yeah, he really has. And I think that uh, Barber Road is you know, admittedly not a horse that I think is very likely to win in this race. I do think that out of all the major preps, to me, it feels like the Arkansas circuit had some of the weakest horses come out of those preps. I was not impressed with anybody out of the Southwest or the Rebel or the Arkansas. In the Arkansas Derby, you had a Philly go off as the heavy favorite in Secret Oath. So I think that tells you quite a bit about the caliber of horses that were running that day. And that being said, Barber Road is a horse that sort of always shows up with an honest late run. He doesn't win a whole lot, but he generally is very consistent and he passes off, passes tired horses late. He has had a bit of a knack for finding trouble in his last few starts. And perhaps that's just the nature of his run style, but he's, he certainly does have more than a couple excuses if you're willing to make them for him. But for me, this is not a horse that I want anything to do with on the win side, but he is a horse that I think is very likely to clunk up and run fourth or fifth. I mean, it wouldn't surprise me at all to see this horse picking off the tired runners late and to get up in the bottom of a superfecta or a super high five. I think a lot of handicappers are viewing that the same way. So it remains to be seen how much value there will be in that kind of an opinion. But I definitely think he's uh, one of the least likely winners, but probably one of the most likely horses to run his race and finish somewhere in the, you know, fourth through eighth kind of a range. Which takes us to number 15, White Abario, the Florida preps, another, uh, series that hasn't been super respected but what do you think of him uh, andrew historically they are should be very respected this mm -hmm. year probably not so much the tyler graf leone red hot just won the jockey title at keeneland did it very very well safi this may be his opportunity here white abario won four times at golf green park including two races on the derby trail um i believe we had him both of us had him for one of our picks on the road to the derby in the florida derby he stalked and drew away but interesting, those speed figures didn't come back like I thought. They came pretty soft. Um, and he was drawing away at the top uh, when he got to about the 16th pole. So I was hoping we'd see a little bit of a bump there. I'm a little concerned by this. And uh, the other knock I'll say is, you know, his workmate in the morning, he said, first of all, a very interesting work schedule. He got rained off twice and he actually worked after the 10th race the other day, which I don't think I've ever seen before, a horse working after the 10th race of a day. Um, but usually I like to see, especially coming into a big race like the Derby, I like to see the best of the best in that field uh, for that trainer working with that horse. I want the horse, the trainer's top crop working with that Derby. Why the Barrio isn't, he's working with a, an okay horse at best. Um, and that horse's top buyer is about five points lower than his. So uh, I think I'm not really happy this. I think his running style would be very successful for the, derby i think the 15 post is going to hurt him a little bit we're starting to get to the outside of the track where it becomes a little bit more difficult um but i'll definitely have him you know in in my supers somewhere i'm not necessarily in my tribe but probably like like similar to a barber road somebody i'll have him fourth um for an opportunity to, to maybe hang on there um he is over that 91 a uh, 95 rule that i like to to go i think he had a 97 was his top so a horse that's definitely a interesting horse for the for the rest of the year i don't know if this is his race um and i really am concerned i'm on that training cycle coming in which brings us to the 16 horse a horse that's come from some very very interesting races um coming into for the road to the derby it sort of bounced around a little bit what'd you think of the 16 cyber knife yeah so i'm already on the record saying i don't think the arkansas reps were very good this year and i think cyber knife's a pretty good example of why i think that is he ran fine in a couple of maiden allowance races, but he was pretty handily beaten when he tried uh, the Lacombe at the fairgrounds by Call Me Midnight at the center and Papa Cap. I mean, maybe the waters were a little too deep too early for him at that point of his career. He may have turned a corner. I mean, who knows? I will say that I think that the Arkansas Derby was not a strong race, but I thought Cyberknife ran a strong race. He made a middle move into a pace that was pretty quick and pretty hot and looked like he moved a little too early to me, but ultimately ended up actually uh, making the perfect move, taking over the leaders and having plenty left in the tank to hold off Barber Road and Secret Oath. That being said, I think the post draw does hurt him here because he is a horse that kind of likes to be in that second flight. And from the 16 post, he seems more than likely to lose quite a bit of ground here. Else he's gonna have to send harder than he really wants to or be forced to take up a lot further back than he wants to. So this is a horse that uh, did not come home very quickly in that Arkansas Derby. It was kind of a stagger fest down the lane and the post draw losing ground, a number of factors here combined to make me a little bit skeptical of his chances come Saturday. I think that he could potentially get a top 
five or six finish with a lot of racing luck. I wouldn't be surprised to see him do much better than that. What did you make of number 17, Classic Causeway? It wasn't supposed to be in this race, but here we are. Exactly. Um, Classic Causeway, Brian Lynch, uh, Julian LaPeru up, which blew my mind, this that running style of horse. And uh, they put this jockey on, who's not necessarily known as somebody to get out of the gate and really get going. Um, this is LaPeru's 14th derby, his best finish coming in 2017. He hit the bottom of the super in Classic Empire. Classic ho Causeway hopped back in the derby field after not being in the derby field and then came off the trail, came back on the trail. Um, and I equate this hopping to be him like a rabbit. I think this horse is just going to go early. Um, those time form early pace figures are very, very fast. I think this horse is a little bit of a rabbit. I don't want to say we, we have rabbits anymore in the, in the modern derby era, but too fast, too early, gets tired at the top of the stretch. Two wins at Tampa that showed some sort of promise. And then when he folded with dueling simplification, the Florida Derby, I really understood maybe this horse is a, a miler and he doesn't want the distance. Um, this is a toss. I don't want to spend much more time on this horse. This horse is a complete toss for me. 30 to 1 on the morning line was extremely generous in my opinion. Which brings us to the 18 horse here who, interesting, I, I, I boomed me in the Lexington, uh, Tawny Port. Yeah, he also been to me in Lexington as I did not think he was going to uh, – not that I didn't get the job done, but I think he was like 5-2 to two in the book, and I thought that price was too short. He, he ultimately went off 5-1 to one and was a pretty good-looking winner visually anyway. The problem is that that race didn't come back very fast. I think the buyer came in at around an 89, which is just nowhere near the 95 that you mentioned earlier, Andrew. Pretty much need to consider yourself a win candidate here. That being said, this is a horse that I like a little bit to maybe get a piece of this. I don't think he has any chance to win, and the post draw certainly didn't do him any favors here. But if you look at his body of work, I mean, he ran a decent second to Tis the Bomb uh, on a day when he was a little bit closer to the pace, and closers seemed to do better that day at Turfway and the Jeff Ruby Stakes. And then you look at his, you know, probably the key race and the Risen Star, and he didn't really run that poorly. I mean, he was inside shuffled toward the back of the pack tried to make a move got shuffled back once again lost ground again and then finally uh got wide into the stretch and made a decent run to get up for fifth if you look at the horses that beat him that day i mean epicenter smile happy and zandon i mean those are three very legitimate horses you know including your two morning line favorites in this race now he was you know seven lengths clear so it isn't like he was a threat to those horses that day but I do think that he showed that he handles dirt and he can come from off the pace like he did in the Lexington. So this is a horse that uh, I, I think that I might have a couple of tickets using him in the bottom of my superfecta, superfecta and trifecta, but nothing on the top. I think we're at the last of the Brad Cox trio now with number 19, Zozos. Is this horse making your tickets anywhere, Andrew? Uh, it's probably going to make some of my tickets, to be honest with you. I think it's going to be an opportunity to be uh, in the super. I, that bottom of my super, I'll probably have eight horses. So this is an opportunity for a horse that, that'll make it. Uh, Manny Franco's fourth derby. He finished second in that weird September 2020 uh, um, derby. This is one of those, where Brad, where was this horse? Brad Cox, why do we only have three races? If this horse had one more race, I think this would be a lot shorter of a line. I think it would show even more of improvement. Um, late Derby Trail horse with a pretty impressive performance in that Louisiana Derby. Finishing three back off Epicenter and only his third race. And Epicenter, obviously, is going to be the favorite or the co-favorite in this race. He set the pace that day, and I think uh, he will be in the front four this coming Saturday again. Uh, from the 19th post, I think that's the only thing is to try to cut that corner and and get out there and try to hold on for something. Um, the early time form figures are, are, are pretty fast. I want to see, again, there's just so little data on this, but uh, it's a horse that um, has speed to hold. He's shown it definitely can carry the distance in that fairground race. Uh, it's only his fourth race of the career, so that's a pretty big ask for a horse, uh, especially coming from that 19. Um, I think this horse... I have a feeling this horse at some point might be at, be on the lead somewhere on the back stretch if they if they really get it really get it out there. But it's going to be a horse I'm going to be using in probably the third or fourth spots in some of my supers. Um, not a horse I'm in love with. It gets over that that line of 95, running that 98 down there at the Louisiana Derby. So horse I'm interested in. I wish I had an indoor uh, more inside post. 
I really wish it it didn't have Manny Franco on it. It had a different jockey. Um, I don't think he's riding at, at his top caliber right now. Great jockey, but just not his top caliber. And again, I really wish this horse had one more race coming into it um, so we could get a little bit under, more of understanding of what's going on. Uh, Cox just waited a little too long in the year, I think, to get this horse going. So that round, we're going to round out the field here with number 20, who drew in earlier this week, Ethereal Road. Yeah, uh, our boy D. Wayne Lucas gets one more hurrah in the Kentucky Derby, or at least one more hurrah with Ethereal Road. This is a horse that would be a surprise, to say the least. More than likely will be one of the longest shots on the board. Doesn't really have a prayer of winning this race, you wouldn't think, based on his body of work that he's shown so far. Only has one win to his name and then a couple of minor awards. That being said, I mean, this is the kind of horse that might just take all the way back to dead last from that far outside post and hope the race falls apart in front of him and he gets a clean trip and look to, you know, come flying late with one big run. It feels like his only option in this race, honestly. Uh, watching the Lexington back over, he, he ran okay. He kind of followed the move of Tawny Port and just wasn't as effective as Tawny Port in that race. He looked like he was loaded turning for home and flattened out a little bit. So, you know, to me, despite you know, the pedigree and whatnot, suggesting more distance is good. Maybe it is, but he's just not quite good enough against this caliber of horses. But given the post draw and the run style, I think that he would be a surprise anywhere in the top four for me. So not one that I'll have, but uh, I know a lot of folks look for those bomb closers to clunk up, clunk up the super. And for some people, I'm sure he fits the bill. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. I think the, the one thing this year is we have so many of those really good closers that uh, the bomb closer keeps it more difficult when we have some short-priced, really good closers in the field. Um, there are two also eligibles in this race. We are past the point where they would – they would um, we're past the draw, so they would take over and every horse would move in and they would get post number 20. Um, the two also eligible, Rich Strike and Rattle and Roll, although they might be decent caliber horses, both of them have not run speed figures. Um, the buyers are nowhere close to – 95 and they'd be coming from the most outside post both of them running styles are, are going to be for that late kick um, when you look at the time form late figure on those they're not even close to anywhere on the field so i think we can just toss them even if they do draw in um, i believe it's 9 a.m on friday was the last opportunity for them to draw in so that's our field for 20 for this year's kentucky derby this coming saturday very excited for this race let's talk a little bit about picks here we're going to start off by uh looking at Bobby, probably one of my favorite bets of the weekend the Oaks Derby Daily Double. Um, I'm going to be starting with a single in the Oaks. Um, I like to play this bet, and I'm going to always look for my bomb most of the time coming from that Oaks. I feel like that field, um, it's going to be a little bit up front. If the six and seven break together, I think there's an opportunity for, for horses to melt. It's going to be sloppy as all hell. Um, they're expecting such so much rain. So I'm going to go with a, a bomb here, a horse that I've been on for a little bit now. Um, horses four for four. Uh, Sham Sh Shahaman, um, half sister to pick this winner, looking at Lucky, four for four, all class. He's one in the off, which is very rare for a horse coming from Dubai that's had an off race track. Did not mind the kickback at all. Watch the race. You'll see the horse just just uh, keeps going. It's a bit of a stretch in the Oaks, but we are getting that slop. I want to have a price. Pletcher has had nothing but classy things to say about the horse. He said it's one of the classiest fillies he's ever seen. Um, he's very excited to, to the opportunity to train the horse. And in the morning, the horse has been doing phenomenal. So this is a horse I'm, I'm very interested in. So my Oaks Derby Daily Double is going to be that. And we're going to do it one time into simplification, Modan going uh, and crown. And I'm going to do it two times into epicenter and Messier. So I'm going to play a little bit weighted there. Uh, a little bit more on those shorter odds, but if I have this opportunity to hit the uh, horse maybe 18, 20 to 1 on the first half of the double, I want to have a coverage of at least five horses on the second side. What did you have for your Oaks Derby Daily Double? Yeah, so I took uh, about an opposite approach to you, I think, in terms of uh, how I structured this. I thought the Oaks was a little bit more wide open for me. I couldn't really land on a single horse that I felt strongly about. For me, I'm going to take a stand against Echo Zulu. I thought that last race was really poor. I didn't care for the optics of it. She looked life or death to get that race at one to nine. She should take a step forward and she's certainly going to need to, but she really hasn't moved forward at all since you know her spin away effort back at Saratoga. So for me, I'm going to be against her and I'm going to spread a little bit trying to get the winner here. Uh, I'm going to be using Secret Oath as well as Nest who are probably going to be two of your shorter prices. And then on uh, a 
ticket that's going to be weighted a little bit less. I'm also going to have some of the number three hidden connection who I thought ran a really good race in the fairgrounds. Oaks just got an unlucky Bob to barely miss two Echo Zulu in that race. She loves Churchill Downs where she ran the race of her career in the Pocahontas and then uh, gets back to her two-year-old top last out. I think she moves forward here. And the other filly I'm going to use is the number eight, Venti Valentine. This might be one of those uh, New York bred specialists. It just doesn't quite that good. But I thought that she's really shown a, a respectable account of herself so far in her career. She's only been beaten by Nest by a neck. I thought that she was uh, wide against a good rail last time when she was beaten by Nostalgic at Aqueduct in the Gazelle. And if the track comes up sloppy like they're expecting, she's bred to absolutely love an off track. She has a win over a sloppy sealed track already. So she's one that I want on some of my tickets. I'm going to use those four horses doubling into a single in the Derby, which is Epicenter. I think Epicenter is the horse to beat. I'm kind of tipping my hand for who I like in the Derby, but I'll have those four horses doubled into Epicenter, who I very much think is the horse to beat. That's great. I, I like that. that you're, the confidence, we're doing complete opposites on it, um, but we'll see how this turns out. I think that the, the track conditions on Friday are going to be something that we haven't seen in a long time. They're expecting quite a bit of rain. So the moment we've all been waiting for, Caleb Knight, what is your top pick for the Kentucky Derby and your long shot? Yeah, so I uh, just spoiled it a little bit, but going back to number three, Epicenter, this is a horse that really just checks every single box that I look for in a derby horse. He has tactical speed. He's not a one-dimensional need-the-lead type. He comes in with fast speed figures. His buyer figures are over 100. He's thoroughgraph figures. He's paired tops in his last two. You would expect to move forward. And those last two are honestly under wraps. I mean, he could arguably have ran a little bit quicker. Get, get Rosario up for Asmussen. I mean, Asmussen looking to take home the Derby here. So for me, Epicenter is my pick. And he's just the only horse I don't have major questions about in this field. I feel like I he always shows up. I don't need to worry about his lack of experience. He's very seasoned. He's versatile. And as long as he can work on a trip from the three post and, uh, we don't get a rock or world situation at the break. I think that he is the horse to beat in my opinion. If I'm looking for a price horse in this race, there is probably a handful that I would potentially look to use. But the one that I think is likely getting ignored a little bit is number 15, White Abario. I don't know what price you ultimately get on him, but I'm sure it's going to be double digits, potentially in the 12 to 15 to 1 range. I think this is a horse that people don't like the Florida preps but I haven't heard a fantastic reason why. <laughs> They're a little bit slow compared to, you know, the California preps, but most of the races are slow compared to the California preps. You know, if you don't think that Taba can repeat or that Messier may be going off form a little bit or whatever else, you know, Thurgraf actually had the of Aria race in the Florida Derby is being very quick. Um, you know, the time form and buyer numbers are very respectable as well. This horse is going to be wide, but he's been pretty wide in each of his last two. He was wide in the Holy Bull and then pretty wide again in the Florida Derby. So I don't think that that's necessarily a bad thing for a horse that likes to be racing in the clear and probably not tucked in behind a bunch of other horses taking kickback. I think he's very tactical, gets a nice trip sitting probably somewhere between fourth and sixth going into the turn. And I think he's one that people are probably not respecting quite as much as they should be. That's great. I, uh, I've, I've, we're going to be much different. We'll put it that way. So hopefully one of us cashes cash here. Um, so my top pick here, I'm going to go with Modonigal. Um, I spoke about the horse earlier. Uh, people hate, you know, sh short, short price closers. I, I couldn't take Zandon. I think this is a race where it's going to be a little bit of craziness, a little bit of chaos. Coming into this field, the, uh, if you do your own pace projections and, and I do my own times for, for the first quarter, you know, this is going to be a wild starting to this race. 20 horses coming in. You have three horses in this race that this is a 500% growth in field. They've averaged racing against four other races, four other horses, and now they're racing against 20. So you're seeing a, a huge opportunity here for chaos. Um, I like Modonigal a lot. Those figures came back unbelievable from the Wood Memorial. Um, I think the horse early voting would have been my top horse uh, if he was in this race. Modonigal beat that horse. Um, he's saved ground before. He's had kickback. Never been an issue. He's going to be a little bit tighter here. They've been working on getting him a little bit closer. Um, speed's there. Horse is just going to step forward. 96 top buyer last time. I think you're going to see a good one here. This is a horse where I'm going to be looking for a price. Um, I hear what you said on Epicenter, but my rule of thumb is I'm never going to bet a horse below 5-1 to one, uh, to win in the Derby. There's just too much opportunity going on. And my long shot, pretty simple, simplification. I've been on this horse the whole time. 
I think the horse is going to step forward. If you want, read anything about Mike Welch and the morning works, I mean, this horse has just been an absolute beast. Um, hearing that Sano comment about him you know, not having Jose push it, save the horse. Jose had the opportunity to go on two or three other horses in this race, and he chose this one. Um, horse is going to be nice, 26, 28 to 1, I think. So opportunity here to cash a possible big ticket. I'm very excited to see what happens, and hopefully I can cash my futures. Um, going on to my last pick of the day, which is going to be a trifecta. A um, little bit different here. We, we disagreed on, on this horse earlier today, but I'm going to be playing a pretty simple trifecta here. Simplification, Modonical, and Crown over. Simplification, Modonical, Crown, Epicenter, Messier over. Simplification, Modonical, Crown, Epicenter, Messier, and Zozos. So that's going to be my trifecta. It's not going to cost you too much. I think uh, $48 on that. Or $38, $48 on that. Um, so good opportunity there. Cheap little ticket. Good good trifecta. You play it for a dollar. That thing, If that comes in, if the, any of those combinations come in, I think you're looking at somewhere in the seven to $10,000 range. So really good opportunity to, to extend your dollar at the end of the day with those trifectas. Did you have any exact plays for the race? Yeah, probably nothing quite as fleshed out as what you come up with, Andrew, as I'm still kind of tinkering and waiting on weather a little bit. But I know that I'm going to have uh, a trifecta built in this race. Where I'm going to be keying Epicenter on top. That's my strongest opinion of the race. That's generally not how I like to construct these wagers in the Derby. Normally, I try to key reverse key a closer, I think, and punk up for third or fourth. But I struggle to find any particular closer I can really latch on to. Kind of as you mentioned earlier, it seems like the, the closers – you know, the cheap closers aren't good enough compared to the likes of Zandon and Modonagal. So I struggle to come up with a deep closer I love at a price. So instead, I'm going to get skinny on top and key Epicenter over Smile Happy, um, Taba, Messier, Simplification, and Barber Road. And then I'm going to throw White Barrio in there as well. So I'm going to play a trifecta with those five underneath of Epicenter. I'm not going to play a combination where it chalks out on me with Epicenter, Messier, and Taba or Epicenter, Taba and Messier. So I'll make sure to avoid some of the super chalk combinations. Maybe look to work in a horse like Tawny Port. But uh, basically my take is I'm going to try to get around Mo Donegal and Zandon, just given the run styles and especially the post for Mo Donegal. Hope they, uh, well, sorry for your luck, but for me, I'm hoping they don't hit the board <laughs> and uh, I can maybe cash in with some of the mid price horses instead. So that's our field of 20, our picks. We appreciate everybody watching through this entire process, Road to the Derby. Um, our next video will not be coming out until the Preakness. We'll, we'll have a video right before the Preakness. Uh, thank you, Caleb. It's been a pleasure the last uh, 10 or 12 weeks working together, breaking down all these races. I have one last question for you before we end here. Who does Mattress Mac bet on? Who goes all favorite? You know, you know, I, I don't want to say it because it's my pick, but I would be surprised if Epicenter is not your favorite come post time. I just... I think that his numbers look better. People like all those ones. It's Rosario. He's got speed. Uh, to me, I, I know Zandon's the morning line favorite, and you know, I think he's even a lukewarm favorite in some of the offshore books. But I think Epicenter ends up going off as your favorite, and I think that's where the uh, where the money hits. I agree with you there. I think Epicenter does go off. I'll be at the Derby enjoying it there. Uh, I'll post some pictures and stuff like that on uh, on our on my Twitter at Who's Got Action. Uh, at, we ask you to like and subscribe so you're updated with all the Horse Racing Nation videos as they come out. Thanks and good luck at the Derby.